Welcome back to another episode of Shmegege, the podcast. I'm your host, Garrett Hazard, and with me, as always, roommate, best friend, the man, the myth, the legend, Kyle Shear, K. Sweezy. Hope you are all doing well. Uh, first and foremost, uh, big podcast news. Big podcast news. Sure. Uh, 21 days away, we are going to have Joe Mom. We are going to have Six Scott Drizzy. We are going to have Cheeky Hungswell. Thonk. <laughs> Whatever Josh's name is, whatever nonsense Andy's name is, Woo-woo. Blake said Eusebio, <laughs> and Esteban maybe, but yeah, he's not that great. Make a wish, kid. Make a wish, kid. We're gonna have all of them together for the FIFA Awards, coming to you live and direct, Facebook Live, anything and everything Facebook page. I'll be posting it. I'll be scheduling it. You'll see the links. Uh, links are gonna be everywhere. I'll put it on my Instagram for July 7th, tentatively starting around 7 p.m., but that time will be, uh, it'll be coming out to you. You'll know. Don't worry about it. But July 7th, it's a Friday, three weeks from today. Be there or be square. All right. Uh, Next thing, uh, I think you noticed this amazing green colored uh, outfit I got right here. Shout out to Fira Sports, uh, hooking me up with this really comfy, really cozy outfit. same color set. I got the shirt. I got the shorts. Um, if you want something like this or any other workout clothes, use the link in my link tree that is on my Instagram, AE underscore with G code. I think it's like GH30 for 30% off. So use that. Support the pod. We get the commission from that. So yeah, you buy this stuff. You support the pod. You support us. We keep giving you episodes. And yeah, that's the the disclaimer, The all the stuff that I got to do first. And now we can actually talk about some shmegege. What a golf I actually looked up the website. I looked up the stuff to see mm-hmm. other things, and uh, I love their neutral colors. Mm-hmm. I love the stuff uh, they have. I will definitely be purchasing definitely shorts or maybe a whole fit because, as we know, summer is already here. Mm-hmm. I know it's been a little bit rainy back in central New York, but mm-hmm. you know it's going to start getting warm. Might as well start getting you know, know some new clothes for the mm-hmm. workouts or the hangouts. Yes, so yes, it looks sir. really nice. I'm mean, happy, and you know we. Don't really like to talk about capitalism. It's not our totally favorite thing from the accountant and you know from the educated kid in the room. But I can tell you, we love supporting small businesses, and you know mm-hmm. it's a big as you know Vince Vaughn says in the movie Wedding Crashes. People helping people. Oh yeah, people helping people. People. I'm pretty sure they also donate to a lot of climate initiatives too. So like whatever percent of that actually goes off to uh, to saving the climate. So yeah. That might have been the smoothest transition ever because your daily smagego. We are going to talk about the wildfires that hit uh, us. Whew. Real quick, I yes, can sir. tell you, who would have thought that the one thing that I thought Canadians could give us more was maple syrup, and now they hit us with absolute smoke and fire. Mm-hmm. I've seen all the memes. I personally think there's going to be a crazy Drake album coming out in the near future. He's mm-hmm. writing that heat, sparks and flames, some dry bush somewhere, <laughs> bada bing, bada boom, wildfires. Here's why I want to talk about why I think it's a day's movie, because yeah. the amount of people we have to talk about our downstate friends. Mm-hmm. Our downstate boys. We do not rep Dykeman, but we have a friend from there. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely ridiculous. I was doing some research. Uh, California. You know, California gets like 9,000 wildfires a year. Yeah, I think I heard about that recently. I mean, they, they like, I don't know. There's some like forestry issues. I, I think like it that. was since like 2003 over over millions of acres have burned in California. I it. So it I, doesn't rain there. So I think it's funny how we hear about it. Mm-hmm. We're like, oh, no, like the California wildfires or, you know, yeah. any, anywhere up there. And then a wildfire that doesn't even occur in New York State because I don't think that would ever happen. I think someone uh, would have to do it, right? Someone would have to physically do it. I don't, I don't, I, I've never heard of a wildfire. Someone can fact check this, but yeah. Uh, hitting, yeah. hitting New York, mm-hmm. like at all. So I think it's real funny how like, boom, it's like one of those like once it hits home type thing. Because now everybody in New York State is walking around with a red sun It just... <laughs> orange yeah. everywhere mm-hmm. and everybody's just starting absolutely bugging out yeah. and people in california and other places mm-hmm. are like this happens like three months out of the yeah. year they're like, like oh, why are you spot. crying <laughs> like why are you crying it's like no different than like if a tornado hit and people are like tornado out here like what are you like what, mm-hmm. like, what you gonna be sissies about it yeah, i like thought earthquakes it, and stuff i thought it was hysterical because it was really like it's interesting how things put people on edge mm-hmm when you're just not used to it oh yeah like i i told you i was in schools and there were like people like ha- handing out masks and like kids mm-hmm. were checking like 
air quality. Yeah, I I shot. I got an email from uh, uh, my HR lady at Bowers, and they're like, "Yeah, if the smoke's affecting you, like, feel free to just like go home and work from home the rest of the day." And I also like how everyone, myself included, just became an expert in the AQI, the air, the air quality index. They're like, "Oh, guys, it's bad. Like the scale, it says it's hazardous." It's like, oh, okay, well. All right, well, actually, we'll have to, you know, figure something out here. Yeah, I was, I was in the classroom just being like, because I, I didn't know how to read it. Yeah. So I'm just in the classroom like, we've hit purple. We've hit purple. <laughs> what is it going to go back to yeah. light pine green? Mm -hmm. And funny enough, uh, that was like the, the day that it got like really, really bad when it was in like the three, four hundreds. That was when I went to Orlando. So, yeah, I, uh, yeah, I brought, the, brought the nice air back, uh, back to upstate New York. Yeah, did you bring the, uh, I mean, I didn't really bring the rain. The rain just kind of was already here. Rain's always here. That's right, yeah. Orlando's also one of those places where it'll say like 30% chance of thunderstorms and then it'll just be sunny the whole day. So I thought that was funny too. That just goes to show you, uh, you can read the weather and look at all the radars you want, but it still might not be what it says it is. So yeah, Isn't there a, a thing where if it says like 30% chance of rain, it's not, there's a 30% yeah, yeah, chance yeah. of rain. So it's, it's like um, the... It's 30% of the city, like the area that it's like reporting on. So like if it says 30% chance of thunderstorms in Orlando, that means 30% of Orlando will experience the thunderstorms, but then the other 70% is fine. So yeah, I don't know how many miles are, don't like, know who Orlando made is, but I mean, yeah, 30% of it's of not as much as 70%, obviously. But Again, yeah. like hearing that, my mind just immediately goes to people just like create things that like only a few groups of people understand and the mm -hmm. rest of us just like go with it yeah mm -hmm. like it's not it's not 30 percent chance oh there might be a 30 percent chance of rain like mm -hmm. you how you would think no it's 30 percent of that of area that is area, going to experience yeah. rain mm -hmm. yeah Meteorologist. The, more you know, the more you know um so yeah uh hopefully uh not a lot of people have um been injured or adversely affected by the wildfires i hope everybody's safe in canada but yeah i mean the air was uh pretty bad up here but, yeah, yeah, but it was for what, like four days? Yeah. Time froze in New York City, but as, yeah. we, as we know, yeah, we thought it was the end of the world. But All right. That was a good daily schmigga. What do we got next? Well, I'm thinking about we have been on a hiatus mm. for a little while, and we got to just, you know, share what we've been up to. Yeah. A little bit of like, you know, what what's new? What, what's been happening? What's new? What's what? You want me what's, to go first? What's new? What's what? Yeah. You what's new? What's what? Maybe show uh, Since the last... No, I'm not going to do that. You, <laughs> you can maybe see a little bit. I got... Um, that's... Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that. But um, yeah, so May was um, May was interesting. I mean, May... So my birthday is May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Star Wars Day. Um, And then uh, I think we celebrated up here. And then we woke up... Kyle and I woke up that Friday, Cinco de Mayo, shot down in New York City to see our boys, Chris, Dev, and Bon. So, uh, so yeah, played a little softball, hit West, uh, West fourth street, which I guess is, uh, it's, it's popping. It was popping. It was a good time. So yeah. got to see them in there, in their habitat. We got to hit a couple bars. So it was a good time. I played softball or it's not, like I touched a baseball bat, softball bat for the first time in years. Uh, might be an all-star in the Queens, uh, city softball league. So, uh, to be determined city on that. Slugger. Yeah. City slugger five for six. No big deal. Slugger. Uh, so then, yeah, a couple weeks go by, work was slowing down and then, um, packed a bag and well, packed a couple bags, went to Dallas, Texas for the USA open volleyball, uh, USA open nationals tournament for volleyball. So had a lot of fun there. We ended up making the gold bracket. We were like fifth place out of like 40 teams. We lost to the number one seed in the quarterfinals. So yeah, I mean it was it was a lot of fun. Played with a lot of guys that I like never really talked to, never really played with before. So that was a lot of fun. Um, got a couple blocks, couple of digs, couple of spikes. You know, you know the vibes. It was a good time. Um, and I was started working on that topspin serve, and that was that was rocking and rolling. Yeah, mm -hmm. starting to get starting to get up there. But um, but yeah, so that was fun. And then then we get to June. I go to be, I go back to work for four days and then I pack again and I go to Orlando. <laughs> uh, in Orlando, uh, me, my brother, and our respective girlfriends all hit up Universal for the first time, which that was a lot of fun. Highly recommend if you go to go to Orlando, you hit up Universal. I think you you definitely got to get the the two park pass if you're if you're able to because just like the rise and the thrills and all that uh, amusement stuff is if you could just go back between both parks, it's um it's really worth it. So, and then next, uh, next group vacation, we'll have to hit up Volcano Bay, which is like that, um, that water park amusement deal that's at Universal too. So yeah, that was like that Friday. And then 
we swing over to Monday and then mom and dad meet up with us in Orlando and my dad gets recognized for um, a lifetime achievement award from uh, the college sports communicators. I do remember that because they, they changed the name it used to be like Cosida. So they rebranded. It's the CSC lifetime achievement award for all the hard work that he's done um, at SUNY Oneana at WPI. Cause you know, he's the goat. He is SUNY Oneana athletics. If I'm being honest. Um, yeah, he's, um, yeah, I mean, got to get some for, cups. Uh, cups. cups. That is not spirit. That is just what we that love. Is, Hard work, is, mm-hmm. sticking Dedication, with something, loving what you do, being good. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think that was a bit of commitment. Right? Yeah. Jeff has a commitment award every year. We all need to be a little mm-hmm. bit like Jeff commitment. It's hard. Mm-hmm. It's scary. Be like Jeff. <laughs> mm-hmm. Be like Jeff. Um, and then the next day we hit up Epcot. Epcot was a good time. Rode the guardians of the galaxy ride, which is by far the best ride in Disney. Um, and then, yeah, Wednesday I came back here. So, um, done a lot of traveling. I've, I've exhausted all of the PTO from, uh, from Bowers this year. So yeah, now we're, uh, now we're back to work. Now got, we're some, back on the podcast. got some, uh, got some, uh, frequent flyer points. Oh yeah. The JetBlue points go crazy. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah. Weird, I got the right? JetBlue plus card. I got, I don't know. They, they changed up the point system. So I got like, yeah, I got tiles, I got points, I got miles. I got, I got, I got black, I got white. What you want? But still, know. yeah. Yeah. Frequent flyer. Yeah. No, so what have you been up to big guy? Uh, crippling with the idea of loneliness has been hard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know what's really funny is that if you could see through my eyes what it was like for uh my roommate, best friend, podcast host, and landlord, if you're hazard, what it was like to have him come, leave, come back, and leave. Picture it as like one of those like old '90s, early 2000s kind of like uh what do you call it? Montages of the people speeding up and going out, <laughs> but the one person is just stagnant. So I'm sitting on the couch and Gary's oh, just yeah. moving in and out, in and out of the house, getting stuff, you know, yeah. getting whatever he, he needs for his workouts or leaving, mm-hmm. coming to work and leaving. And then he's gone for you know, a week and then he comes back. I'm just like, oh, hey, man. He's like, I gotta go. And then, you know, <laughs> then he leaves again, type stuff. But you no, know, again, with our character differences, I, I enjoy that because I, well, I've just been chilling. I mean, a lot of, a lot of self self thinking. I mean, a lot a lot has happened. I mean, I'm very thankful for uh, you know, the Jamesville Dewitt area and all that for allowing me to, you know, continue practicing my craft. I've really been enjoying that. I I know that you know I'm I'm gonna love what I do, but that's really <laughs> that's really all I got. I am okay. excited for for more <laughs> stuff. Um, uh, what I will talk about though is our city experience um two things Ooh, yeah. that everyone has to do in life one you have to go to a taco bell cantina and you have to experience taco bell on a another scale mm-hmm. i mean walking inside beautiful i'm talking like gotta be like four michelin stars and alcohol within yeah. the stuff mm-hmm. spike baja blast freeze. Spike baja, how, mm-hmm. how can you not how can you not and i also will shout out if you haven't had an amaretto. Ah, oh, amaretto sour, an yeah. Amaretto sour before. Shout out, Dev. Mm-hmm. Everybody needs to get on it. I am going to start it. We'll make it trend. Hashtag amaretto sour summer. Yeah. Oh, Come on. yeah. Come on. Think of Ass. It. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> it's it. I mean, I've never had one. I've had all of the ingredients for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Separately, actually, I have just had the, the mixer just randomly <laughs> for no reason at all. Mm. But I've had all those ingredients, and to now think that you know they serve those concoctions at bars absolutely mm. gotta be nine point five out of ten, ten out of ten. Oh, yeah. It has mm-hmm. never missed. Yeah, I'm ready for our summer. Get everybody on it. It will be our drink. We might just start having maybe a little, little couple. Of, oh um, yeah, five, yeah. You know, we'll we'll pull, pull a little Serato in here. Stuff. We'll plug the sweet and sour mix. I oh, actually, exactly. uh, so when I was visiting, uh, before I went to Dallas, I was with Meme, I was with the family. We had bought the ingredients for it and I tried to make it like me being, me being me, I was trying to make it like low calorie and like that, the the non-sugar, the no sugar, you gotta, you gotta get like the actual ingredients. You gotta get the real sweet and sour mix. You gotta get the Di Serrano. You gotta get a uh, little bit of Sprite or whatever, like Seven Up. You gotta get that. There's a couple other things that I'm missing, but um, but yeah. And then when I went to Dallas on the last night, we went to this Italian restaurant and they had a blood orange frozen amaretto sour, and that shit was 
fire. Had that with my steak, had that with my, yeah, I had like a little surf and turf and then had the drink and that was, oh, it was fire. We'll try and perfect the, uh, we'll try and perfect the mix uh, for our, for our little FIFA awards. I know Battle of the Summer is going to be, what, what do we think? The perfect. Uh, yeah, what do we think? A little more sour, a little sour or, you know, because everybody loves a good mark. Mm, a good yeah. Mark. So mm-hmm. it's going to be, you know, if, we, if people can comment on things like this, shoot what yeah. you will prefer. Mm-hmm. What do you, what do you rep it in the, in the Battle of Summertime drinks? Because it's a fair shout. Because mm-hmm. we do, as we know, in our friend group, love a good margarita mm-hmm. frozen of love course, a good frozen and then, drink and then uh, i'm gonna I see a, see a fro- frozen drink on the drink menu i'm i'm probably getting it so. was your was your uh your armor asada wasn't frozen was it uh, was just regular that was just different when we were in the city no when you had, oh you know, yeah the orange, yeah, yeah. That was just, just regular yeah. just different mm-hmm. just they, change, they, they changed up the, uh yeah they mm-hmm. talk about how you can really do a frozen that would be kind of yeah odd mm-hmm but another thing that i will say is that and i did this because i did try it is a lie don't ever mix armor with uh, a Corona, it doesn't taste like Dr. Pepper. That was, that was the biggest lie I had ever been told. But I'm glad I, you know, did right by science and yeah. you know, decided mm-hmm. to do a lab test. And yeah, you you did your due diligence. Horrendous. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm trying to think. I've never had uh, the De Serrano straight. But I, yeah, I, don't, I can't imagine that. You plus like, a you Corona. Look, liqueur, liqueurs are good. Yeah, liqueurs I heard it's really, really sweet, which I mean, I got, I got a big sweet tooth. It will, so. it will hit you yeah. like one of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Little right. chef's kiss from the... So yeah, so shout out them because you know we're gonna be in our new fits mm-hmm. and sipping that that he's throwing because it's absolutely excellent. All right, talked a little uh, amaretto sour summer, a little catch up. Now going on to more stuff with the summer. This yeah. is probably uh, the most familiar that anybody and everybody can relate to because mm. I all my life didn't have to deal with it, but now I am. But the most nonsense of the summer is allergies. <laughs> let me <laughs> yeah. tell, let me tell yeah. you why. Let me tell you why my. Pops and my brother, shout them out both, they horrible allergies all their lives. Yeah. Like they go cut the grass, boom. No, I was like, ha, ah, I'm weak. You know, mm-hmm. your bloodline is weak, even though I am the bloodline too. Yeah. And I go to Virginia and apparently like it was the air or whatever it was, but I felt fine. Then when I come back up here, mm-hmm. now bada bing, bada boom, I got allergies. You know, I'm sneezing when I'm yeah, like, I don't know yeah, if people yeah. hear me sneezing Sometimes, like Sometimes, yeah. It's it's bad and i get the dry eyes oh just the dry eyes yeah. and it's horrendous and i don't take any like claritin or zyrtex for it yeah. mm-hmm. because you know even though i'm suffering it will forever be fuck big pharma i gotta say it. that stuff just <laughs> wild I, I now am a full i've seen the videos i've looked at the documentations mm-hmm. i've read the articles i'm not with it so i will not be purchasing over the counter because yep. mm-hmm. i know more people are suffering too in a worse way than just allergies, but mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you have any allergies? Anything like that? Uh, well, know? funny enough, there was one time I left my window open. I had the fan going. I don't know if that would, if that is a lethal oh, combination. A bad. I don't know. Yeah. So yeah, and then one day I look, I woke up and like my throat was really dry. Nose was stuffy. I was sneezing a little bit. So I don't know if it. And this was right around the time where like that that smoke from from Canada was coming mm-hmm. in too. Yeah, so okay, yeah. like the air was just not. It, things were not vibing. And this was before I went to nationals. So, but um. But yeah, I also I have a bad experience with Benadryl. So I I had learned recently mm-hmm. on one of my flights that um, there's a point in time where like I was like three years older, four years old or something, and I like I was about to get on a flight. I wasn't like I was I was being really fussy. My mom was like couldn't get me to calm down to like go to sleep. So she like force fed me Benadryl to like get me to like knock out. And it worked. And I don't think since that day I've even thought about taking Benadryl. So I guess that's just like a really bad repressed like trauma memory that I've had. And now like when I have allergies, I just like I deal with that. I'm like, okay, like I'll be fine. It, it, whether it's a cold or allergies, whatever the case is, I'll deal with it. I'll drink a lot of water. I'll do all that. I'll do, I'll do the salt water gargling, all that for my throat, all that. But yeah, I haven't even thought about taking Benadryl. And when I learned that information, I'm like, well, that makes sense. Yeah, that's, so. that, that, was, that was a child services moment. That was a, yeah. where's the air marshal? <laughs> where's the air marshal, my son? But yeah, I mean, no, I mean, my side tangent, my parents are amazing. Oh. But like, yeah, you got to do what you got to do. Your kids being fussy, you know? <laughs> know. Feed them Benadryl. I know. I feel like that's just so common, like with the the, the Nonas and grandpas mm-hmm. of the world like, being like, oh no, just have just have to take this yeah. suckle this alcohol. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, this this str- straight awful, like, you know, this straight made from potatoes just, yeah. vodka is mm-hmm. gonna just knock your child yeah. out. Mm-hmm. 
you have to calm down a little bit. It does. It does. You don't right. even it even knocks out grown men. So yeah, in conclusion, uh, after Child Protective Services uh, bans this podcast, uh, <laughs> either deal with allergies or uh, yeah, fuck big pharma. So uh, so yeah, yeah, that's, stay, that's good stuff. Stay strong. So now a really big thing that I, I want to talk about, just because I find it really interesting, uh, dealing with uh, smaller children. Because mm-hmm. you know I deal with high school kids most. Yeah. Uh, I have recently been subbing as the gym teacher. Yeah. And I find it so interesting. And I know you were a collegiate athlete. Mm. I was a collegiate athlete. You, because you are, you know, 6'4", with, you know, a, I'm going to, I don't really know how good a vertical is. I'm going to say like 35. Uh, A little bit lower, but yeah, something like that. You have kind of kept the ability to be sought out to continue to play. Oh, like, yeah, like lining, like when all the kids line up, yeah, I'm like, pick one or two is that yeah you mean? And, yeah and, that, and that's why like like when you go like like for your work it's like oh my god like he does this and they find yeah. out oh you you played these sports mm-hmm. and you want to be a part of all yeah, this yeah, type, yeah. type stuff which i think is is great i hope to, to be able to do that myself i'm super excited for the kickball league it's going to be hysterical oh, yeah. mm-hmm. i will let you know again kickball i don't use my hands so if the ball comes to me i will trap it and i will you will have to be there to catch it because i will pass it to you in the end. that'd be so funny if you're on second and i'm at short and you just like you just like rainbow it to me before it hits the ground and yeah. i just catch it the ball comes i just catch it between flick it and just pop it <laughs> when you catch it it's really gonna be the harlem globe trot or yeah, something yeah we people. might yeah uh but i find it interesting because we have all been around people older individuals who takes stuff way too seriously. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Way too seriously. And it's interesting because when I deal with these younger kids, they are bizarrely competitive. Crazy. Every little thing. Arguing. And, like, it's not always the, you know, oh, like, I got you out, like, we're playing tag. Mm-hmm. It's like the kids who we organize real sports games for Mm -hmm. that just get heated Mm -hmm. and like i always think about like what is a real competitive drive and is it wanting to be better wanting to be better than others or like what how we see with older adults are now how i'm seeing with these kids of just like yelling and like all like like i want to win so bad i'm gonna you know, do these somewhat unsportsmanlike things. Mm, yeah. Because it it baffles me every time I, I go into gym and I set it up and it's just like, and you know, kids are kids. It's not always about like the oh like no, like I didn't get like they didn't actually tag me, they didn't actually get me out. But it's just like more so just like like the yelling at yeah. me. Like, and like kids just like it's weird because they come in all nice and childlike mm-hmm. and whimsical and it's like, okay, like you're up to bad and it's just like then some kids like that's not how you do it like you're, you're three you're 30 feet too inside of the the bag and, and, and i'm just like what like yeah. you have literally 40 minutes to go run around right so i don't like where that that stems from because it seems like every kid at that age mm-hmm. it's all die for this sport yeah and then like it takes like a 40 year break and it just goes back to these grown men and women like also being like i'm going to die for this and i'm going to like yell or do unethical things Mm -hmm. when everybody's like we're really just not gonna like have fun and like just get out of the house or not do something related to to work you know what i'm saying i think that's interesting with the i mean from the the kids aspect i mean they probably all have access to like social media and things like that if they see I don't know, like a a kid going through, like if they see like that Steph Curry video when he was shooting around with his dad before the games and they're like, ooh, like I want to do that. And like they'll they'll like start to be in that mindset of like, okay, I need to do this. I need to do this. Like I want to do, like I really want to play this sport, whatever it may be. And then you have the kids that are like super duper like play by the rules. And those are the kids that are like, oh, you're standing too close to the bag or like whatever the case may be. And like if those two kids like start butting heads, like that one kid is like, I just want to beat you to like beat you because I want to be better than you. And then the other kid's just like, no, like you're playing the game wrong, like things like that. Mm. And like, I don't know, like and eventually when 
you get older, you'll have the two individuals that are like actually good at the sport that like keep playing and like might not know when to quit. And then they'll start chirping at you because they're like, oh, back in my day, I was doing this, that, and the other thing. And then you have those kids that were like super uh, by the rule book. And they're like, oh, back in my day, we used to do this and we used to do this. You're not playing it right now. And like that mix of people and like that uber competitiveness, it's just, yeah, I don't like it. It might just be from whether it be the media or like they're just like, they don't know how to get over themselves. Yeah, it's just, it's interesting because I don't know like where it stems from because mm-hmm. I feel like they're too young. So again, we're not talking about like middle school, high school. Right, we're talking right, about right. kids who are, you know, you know, pre-teens mm-hmm. to, to teens. We're talking about like kids who are straight up like learning how to, you know, multiply single digit numbers. Right. They're learning how to read and write, but then you put and them on And then they're like... here. Yeah. And then they go into us. Because mm-hmm. my, my thing was, my joke was like, I go, if this was a competition, they would have called it like, competitions class Mm -hmm. it's gym class Mm -hmm. and i get the whole like gym class here like gym class like try hard Mm -hmm. but try isn't always a bad thing just because you're trying your hardest Mm -hmm. doesn't mean like oh this is a negative thing like oh he's trying Mm -hmm. but it's the kids who are just yelling at you know they're just constantly going at and they Mm -hmm. always have you know stuff to complain Mm -hmm. about or you know like this isn't fair blah 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 Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't know where it comes from because I feel like, you know, yeah. like, like their coach, even if they have like, because again, like I don't know kids who like do like young, you know, sports like that, you know, whether it be, you know, soccer, basketball, like it's team, mm-hmm. but it's still young. But then you would hope that like those parents and coaches aren't like taking it as serious because that's just like a and fundamental And I think you, you might have just touched on it. I think it might be like their parents too. Like if their parents, if, if, if I'm a little kid, four or five, six years old, and I see my parents yelling at the TV because they're not playing basketball the right way. Then I'm going to start yelling at other people that I see not playing basketball the right way. Because I'm like, oh, Let's well. the sponges. Yeah. They're yeah so, like, if they see that in their house and they're just, like, and then they, they bring it onto the, the basketball court and, like, someone does the same move that they saw on TV and they're like, that's a carry. Like, my dad says that's a carry. And stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Like, you get those kids. So. Yeah, true. Yeah, that's why and I think about it like to me if I if I was a parent because you've seen me watch soccer mm-hmm. and that's why I try to just be uh only passionate in the oh my god we scored or oh my goodness mm-hmm. we didn't score mm-hmm. not so much someone did something wrong oh my goodness yeah because or like like a turnover like or like not the correct yeah pass. I'm not gonna yell yeah. at someone who like oh they passed the ball and it was it was short to the guy, so I gosh, I'm not gonna mm-hmm. yell at that. It's yeah. just like excitement or like depression. Yeah, mm-hmm. quick depression. I like see sadness. myself doing that, like when I watch basketball. Like I know, like that, like they're all making the extra pass and things like that. And like if I'll if I'll see something like, oh, he's open in the corner, but then he passes somewhere else. I'm not like, oh, you should have passed it to him in the corner. Like I'm not like, no, nah, that. yeah, like that, that makes no sense. Like they're dumb. they're they're at that level for a reason. So like, who are you to? question their judgment yeah so yeah and i i say this because it's important because again sports even though they can get competitive and they can lead you to places Mm -hmm. remember that it's always leisure it's always fun Mm -hmm. and we have to remember which is now becoming more so you know widely known is you know the mental health aspect oh yeah in sports and i feel like if you know little kids are yelling and screaming and complaining you know that might mental health not be the best move Mm -hmm. you know yeah no i get that if they're if they're in an environment that's like more or less toxic with all the yelling and screaming and name calling whatever it may be yeah then they go home and if they're in the mindset of like overthinking that from a young age for whatever reason they're going to think poorly of that sport and they're going to disassociate themselves from it. And they're not going to want to play it anymore because they're like, Oh, like, I mean, if I, like, I'm just trying to play soccer with my friends and like have fun. But like, if people are yelling at me, then I don't want to play anymore. Yeah. yeah, That's not fun. Yeah. And here, speaking of the podcast, very big on making sure the future is developed. Oh yeah. In a proper way safe space in inclusive way good times mm-hmm. everybody yeah 
belongs. Yes, and very much inclusive. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's really strange because I was really going into all these gym classes. Like, we're just going to have fun and mm-hmm. we're going to do well. And I only get, like, one class. Yeah. That, where mm-hmm. everybody's just super nice, super chill. Mm-hmm. You know, acts mature in a way. And then you're just like, why are you like this? Why are other people not? I thought all kids your age are supposed to be so it's yeah. the same. Mm-hmm. Like, what's the deal? Like, why I, got, why I got one kid yelling, you know, throwing the, the ball at somebody, like, you know, that should get a technical foul. And then yeah. I got other mm-hmm. kids like, oh, no, like, I'm sorry. Like, I, I didn't catch the ball. Like, you're not out. Like, that's on me. It's like, oh. Thank you. Yeah, you know? yeah. Thank no, you. everyone, everyone's just got to dial down, especially yeah. if it's like gym class. Yeah, my my lesson for the for the kids today was uh, <laughs> don't argue with the ref because the ref's not going to change the yeah, call. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's what it got to. Like people mm-hmm. were coming up to me. Did they have referee? Were you the referee? Yeah. Oh, the, okay, the, gotcha. And yeah. like they were like like what? like I, I I had a kid be like you didn't see that and me be like I have to make sure like no one's like crying or no yeah. one freaks out because they got a a floor burn mm-hmm. you want me to to see if you know t- t- i goes to the yeah. runner like, i can't do that we, you know this we, is we're a... playing a uh four base kickball gotcha okay. you know like that you run around yeah, twice yeah, yeah. just the mm-hmm. mats in the corner mm-hmm. super fun game i actually yeah. love it but it was like God, I gotta relax someone's getting a gold medal and win the trophy yeah like, like you're going to lunch after this and you're getting pizza and broccoli. Yeah, think about that. And then you have <laughs> English afterwards. Exactly. Because you don't yeah. know how to read. <laughs> very true. Yes. Literacy is very, very low. I'm so, ready to do that. yeah, with that, <laughs> yeah, with that, I think a good lesson to teach these kids at a young age is you, you got to respect the game. Mm-hmm. You got to respect the people officiating the game because we'll tell you from experience, you're going to get missed calls. Not everything's going to go your way. And if everything does go your way, the next time something's up in the air, it's not going your way. Yes. So I you got to you gotta respect the referees. You got you to gotta respect your coaches. Like they, they're trying to do their best. And if they miss something, oh, well, next play. Like you go into the – like for us, it's like, okay, next ball. Like don't worry about it. Like if I – in volleyball, if I swing and I hit it out of the court and I think someone touched it – and I looked at the referees, I'm like, oh, he touched it. And they're like, no. I'm like, okay, that sucks. But, like, that's why you played a 25. Like, that's not going to make or break the game. If they, Even if they did touch it and they missed the call, like, it's no big deal. Yeah. Yeah. That's, never... that's all you can teach the kids. And if they get it, then great. They'll, they'll be, they will be better athletes for it. And if they just don't understand that and they always have that need to be right, then they're just not going to enjoy sports because they're going to be more worried about – their own personal performance than the actual team, and then that's not gonna help anybody. Yeah, don't take it too seriously. Yeah, don't take that, it, don't, don't take, don't take it at all. It's too. not, it's not the big thing. Seriously, thing. be competitive, but don't, don't take it seriously. Yeah, if you enjoy mm-hmm. it, you're gonna work hard. If you're not gonna, do yeah, it. believe me, the, the amount of times in basketball that I try to play like hands up defense and I still get a foul call, and I look and I'm just like, like what else do I do? And they're just like, oh, like you know, I thought you fouled them. I'm just like, all right. And like that's why you play well in my leagues, you play two twenty minute halves. So it's not like that is not gonna make or break the rest of my game. So so yeah, we gotta we gotta calm down, respect the game, and move on. Yeah. Shout out to all the old heads. Mm. Take a step down. <laughs> Just relax. It's all not right. gonna affect your day. But now speaking of what we go on with, you know, understanding and learning, let's take a minute or two to focus on individuals who have impacted and helped us out because as we know what do we got coming up this weekend all around we got father's day on sunday we got father's day yeah so shout out and we gotta do all Mm. shout out the fathers yep the father Mm. figures yep the fathers that stepped up and stepped Mm -hmm. in yeah the fathers stepdads because the one thing that i have come to learn is that parenting is it doesn't matter who you are, what you are, if you are around, if you are supportive, motherhood, fatherhood, they can be anything. Mm-hmm. They can be anything and it can be anyone. Anyone mm-hmm. can be a father. Anyone can can be a mother. And I feel like that's really important. Yeah. So shout out to all the people who do fatherhood just right. Mm-hmm. And, you know, two claps. Yeah, two claps. Two claps. Absolutely unbelievable. I would like uh, to shout out my pops. Mm-hmm. One heck of a guy. Mm-hmm. Does a yes, lot. He is. Raised a lot of kids, done a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. and he's absolutely the best. Glue to the family, mm. you know. Can't wait for him to finally, you know, take a vacation. Yeah, 
Great but guy. He's you know, absolutely excellent, and I know there are so many uh, other fathers who, you know, push themselves and have to do stuff and, you know, work hard and just do the right thing and really, really care about their kids. So shout out to, again, all the fathers and father figures out there. Yeah. No, I love that. I literally can't say anything better than that. I will say I love you, Dad. Um, yeah, if you're listening to this, I hope you are. Um, but, yeah, no, I mean, well – we get all of our drive, all of our competitive edge, all of our hard working, our work ethic, all that stuff from, from you guys. So, I mean, we can't thank you enough. Yeah. Always, always make your pops as proud. It's, it's mm-hmm. a big thing. You, you, they, they do a lot. And I mean, not, nothing really more, more to say with that, you know, maybe get a little bit. Obsessed. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, spoilers, we're watching Ted Lasso and there was a, there was a, a special moment for uh, Ted Lasso's father and then another character's father that like, it was, it was pretty sad. I was like, damn, I gotta text my dad. We admit, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. I was, yeah. I remember sitting in, in the corner of my usual spot. Like I get a little bit teary. It's funny because mm. show, shows let me do that. But we've been shouting out a lot of stuff lately. I will shout out Ted Lasso. If you haven't watched it, if you, if you can, have Apple TV, you, you gotta go for it. People, mm-hmm. you know, it's so they, funny. They, I Good see life lessons one. too. I see why it's won a lot of awards. It, it's mm-hmm. it's phenomenal, and I'm glad we we jumped in and we yep we been cruising through it actually. Like right. season three now, so yeah, I, I can't wait for the next show that we we choose. Mm-hmm. Keep, keep it lighthearted, but oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you I guess I'll else? I'll go back. Yes, to story. share the yeah. dumbass yeah. mark. I want that token for you. you yeah, clown so I'm I'm definitely a clown. So um, so when we were in Orlando, um, this was uh. This was actually before my dad accepted his award, so I was trying to, you know, figure out how to put all my dress clothes on. But um, so me, Sanita, and her friend Elvira in Orlando, we went to this thing called Orlando Adventure Trek, and it's like this this outdoor obstacle course. You've probably seen something similar, like on TikTok or anything like that. Like you get all harnessed up, and then you you lock into all the the different like obstacles and like we were going back and forth on like rope swings and like walking on logs that were like off balance and like teeter totters and like things like that and so we get through like the first course and there's a lot of people there like it's it's getting to the afternoon so like people are people are there so we get through the first course which is like the beginner course and then we're looking at like the rest of the courses and like there's like waiting lines to to get into each one and so we had told ourselves like there was like two hours and then we we're going to go get dinner and then go to my dad's thing. So, so then we, oh, I lied. Okay. This was, we actually did this on Sunday. So I didn't have my dad's thing to think about yet. So erase that part and we'll get back to it. So now we're, it's Sunday now gonna go there for two hours, get ready for dinner and then have a good rest of the night. So we were looking around. We know we wanted to do the big zip line at the end of the course. You typically go like, there's like courses one, two, three, four, and then you do the zip line. If you can get through all four, because you only get like two hours to actually do everything. So we do course one, and then we're looking at two, three, and four. There's a big line. We're like, okay, we don't necessarily want to deal with this. Our like our our guide, our tour guide was like, you can go to the big zip line if you want and like come back to this, but like you don't necessarily have to. And we were kind of just like, yeah, I mean, like we did the we did the easy one. Like the the other three look kind of difficult. Like we just want to do the zip line. So we walk up to the zip line. We're up like 50, 75 feet in the air. We start uh, clicking onto the harness. Like I get my they had like this pulley system type thing that you put onto the to the metal zip line that you would go across. It's like 450 feet across all the way back to like the main cabin. So so I'm 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 on the top thing with with Sanita Elvira and then the the tour guide and you know I'm holding it and like I'm ready to go like I'm going back and forth I'm like okay like I look at the trees below me and I look at the guy I was like you know if I if I jump off and like dip a little bit well I hit the trees and he's like yeah you probably would you're a little tall so like you know like tuck your legs a little bit and in that conversation I think I, I lost my focus or something and somehow like my grip changed and I put my right arm like over the rope and so now i'm holding the pulley like ready to go not thinking anything of of where the of where the zip line is and where my arm is so (laughs) so i i 
get a little running start and I just go wee and I get onto the zip line and then two seconds later I'm like ow because I'm rubbing my arm my against friction that. Is gonna hurt. Yeah, the, the friction I was go I was I mean I jumped onto it so like so then I you know I keep going on the zip line not like at I had fixed my grip at that point, but like the damage was already done. So, so yeah, I get to the end and like, I, I stand up because like I, I crashed into the, the, the crash pad and like, there's only like a little bit of wood. So I had to like quickly grab onto the, the rest of the rope, get myself up and then like de-harness myself pretty much. Um, and like Sunita and Elvira were, were struggling to actually get to the end. So they were like, they were like slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. And like, they needed to grab onto something in order to like, keep going. Elvira missed it. So she like started going back, uh, back towards the actual, the start platform. And she ended up stopping and she had to like crawl her way, probably like another hundred feet back to the, the end of it. And she was like, she was like, I'm dead. Like I'm done with oh, this. Yeah, oh, Cause yeah, she was, she was climbing like this she, the she whole way in, guys were in an indiana jones yeah, escape literally. scene basically like what <laughs> so so i de-harness we all walk down the stairs and i look at my arm and it's it's looking a little like this more i mean there's there's more blood and stuff it's starting to, to scab now but um but yeah i mean it was uh definitely dumbass moment of the year for for me because i just i totally lost focus i put my arm over the rope and then as i jumped i i had really bad rope burn on my Leak. arm now less yeah leak less moment of the year me <laughs> and i only wanted you to share that story so i can finally share my story Ooh, about okay. about uh, you know scrapes and burns Ooh. it was 20 either 18 or 19 we were going to a school uh, with my collegiate team and we get to the school and we're doing all this fun stuff with the kids, little events. It's mm. fun, you know, helping them do soccer. And we go inside and they got the ropes. Yeah. And they're like, who wants to challenge the kids in the rope climb? Mm -hmm. And as you know, I have not changed since I was probably like six years old. I so am you're like me. I'm a goon. Yeah. And everybody in there knew I was a goon. Mm. They were like, let's let sheer yeah. the rope climb. And I go up against this child of a girl who I found out was freaking squirrel woman as she could, just got up there. And yeah. while she's up there, I'm struggling to climb this rope. Yeah. I have no upper body strength. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to get up there. And she's like waiting up there, like mocking me. Like she's oh, holding and she's like nah. looking down at me. And I'm like, oh my God, like you're a child. And mm -hmm. I'm with all like my teammates. Like this is awful. Mm -hmm. And she just like floats back down. I swear to God, she didn't even like touch her. She just like floats. Like, like she's definitely going to be on American Ninja Warrior or something. Oh like gosh. it was crazy. And I'm just like, I can't do this. Like it's funny, but this is like low key embarrassing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a college young man. And I release my grip from the rope mm -hmm. and I slide down oh, the whole yeah. rope. I had third degree rope burn on every single so you have like i mean you can see but like, feel your finger yeah. like that layer of skin uh -huh. that layer is gone. gone the next layer is gone like yeah. i was touching raw skin flesh, on, yeah. yeah flesh and like i'm looking at people this is during a rough time so like, i'm looking at people and like everybody's laughing and like i am just like bleeding yeah. out of my fingers it, it looks yeah. horrible mm -hmm. and it was so bad that it was like a like a decently windy day mm -hmm. the wind hitting my fingers would, oh, would yeah, cause nah. me to like yell and shout out um my roommates my southern brothers again especially cody dalton mm -hmm. because i i could not bathe yeah because the water the, right, soap. the soap yeah so <laughs> these Young men who are now my brothers, because this, you know, events, you know, you events mm. make brotherhood, yeah. you not just get brotherhood. I would be like with pre wrap tape yep. mm -hmm. up against the head of the shower, like prison style, while they would have like a broom, mm -hmm. and at the end of the broom was soap. Oh my god! Or they would wear gloves yeah. and they would bathe me. Wow! For days because I. I but, couldn't do yeah. because like my skin was that raw. Like yeah. it was mm -hmm. it was 
off. Like I remember trying to open the car door to get out. Mm -hmm. And like I I missed like the flick to open it. And you know how like some uh car doors they have like that I don't know if it's like it's vinyl, but you know what I mean? It's like that okay, softer yeah. texture. Mm -hmm. I missed that and I dragged my finger across it by uh, mistake. And like you yeah, and it, it sounds sounds so like 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 a bitch. Like you would have you would have thought I just got shot in the thigh. I'm like, oh like, what's going on? And they're like, like my finger is like, like you idiot. Mm -hmm. So I only think it's so funny because like I I know that I know that yeah. dumbass and like what are you doing like did you really not learn about like friction like what is and like once once you learn that once you have that feeling of your skin being you know just ripped off by a, by, by friction of some object you're mm -hmm. like I will never do that again right because it seems so childish but yet like mm -hmm. it can really cause oh yeah like 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 pain and like that because you use that arm a lot like it's it's not gonna heal for like a couple of weeks because yeah. like you're gonna use it you're gonna rip open the scab and do all that so i think it's yeah. i'm always gonna look at that and be like oh my god like i feel that yeah it's gonna be like this for a while but i mean it is what it is it's um you know a little more it's not like as you like you know as you talk about like it's gonna rip and stuff it's not feeling as ripped today so okay good. hopefully the medicine does uh what the medicine does we love that yeah and you know Maybe maybe it's something we we teach our kids and, and follow who you have you know competitiveness, positivity, <laughs> being inclusive and a hey, don't rub up against yeah. objects at a, mm -hmm. at a fast speed. Yeah, <laughs> don't create friction in your body is one of the one of the it's objects that, that stay in that the half second emotions. lapse of judgment will uh, <laughs> will cause pain for for weeks. Like I was um getting ready to like go to Epcot and like I was putting sunscreen on and like I was like well I, I gotta put sunscreen on it and that was cool. Oh. I know that was the, bad. It was a dish, man. Bad. Stuff, stuff but you do because you, you experience do it. it. Yeah. So, you know, all those funny experiences, the good memories, and it's like, I know I have to do that. I have to do yeah. stuff again. You know? <laughs> but no, but, I think um, I think that uh, I think that's a good episode. I like how we uh, like how we segue to it. And that covers a lot. Now. Yeah, we segue really well. And I mean, you know, more to come in the future. We apologize mm -hmm. for taking this break, but you know, so sometimes we touch grass. We do touch grass. Sometimes we are we are busy, and you know, things are are happening that kind of push the pod. Just to the side a little bit, but we, we always reel it back oh, yeah. in as we always do mm -hmm. so very well. It's been reeled back in, and we will catch you on the next episode. Later. Peace out. <laughs>